Hey everybody, it's Ripley. Oh, you guys are going to love this. This is really cool. Alright, Newton's method refers to Newton's method for finding x-intercepts. Is really what the bottom line is. Okay, um, x-intercepts, solutions, zeros, etc., etc. Now, I'm going to show you something because this one's really cool. I'm probably going to hack this because you guys know me. I can't draw these very well. Okay, watch this. So I'm going to take a function and I'm going to call this f of x. Okay, let me change up colors real quick. Now I'm going to pick a point. I want you guys to, to watch something here for a second. I'm going to pick a point. Let's call this guy right here. Um, I'm going to call this x1. So this is going to be x1 f of x1, right? Now, think about this. If I take the tangent line to this, now let's just play for a sec. I'm not getting too crazy. If I take the tangent line to this function and I find its x-intercept. Now, that, that that's relatively easy to do. Do you agree with that? Does that make sense? It's going to slam in to this, to the x-axis at, at a place, let's call x2. Now i got to stay out of my own way here. Okay, so if I pop up here and I go, okay, this is going to be x2 comma f of x2, right? And then, let me change colors again. I love the color change for this thing. Watch what happens if I take the, the tangent line to this line right there, badly drawn. Now notice what's happening here. This zoop, is x3, which if I pop up here onto my line, this is going to be x3 comma f of x3. And then when I take the tangent line at that point, ooh, green, that's definitely not, not hard to miss. What's happening? What is happening to these values of x? They're getting closer and closer and closer to that x-intercept right there, which is what we wanted to find. All right, now watch what would happen if I picked a different point. Now, I'm just going to just sketch this out. If I started here, my line would pop over here, then it would pop up here. It would, and what it would do is it would head for this value right here. Same thing here, right? If I grabbed a value here and I shoot a, a tangent line, right, I'm going to pick up x-intercepts. And when I throw those x-intercepts back down onto the function, the tangent line forces those x-intercepts to get closer and closer and closer to the true zero. And I'm going to show you with the calculator how this works, okay? I'm going to, now, here's the irony. The irony is this. <clears throat> up until about 30 years ago, there wasn't a calculator powerful enough like our calculators that solve for zeros. We know what the zeros are, right? There wasn't a calculator powerful enough to be able to do that. And you got to think in terms of Newton's time, there was no way. I mean, there was, they didn't even have an idea about a calculator able to do that. So what they needed was an algorithm that they could use to figure this out. Okay, they needed something that they could do by hand. The problem is the calculations get really, really cumbersome. Okay, especially for us. We're not trained like Euler and Newton were in being able to calculate things very quickly because we don't have to. We have a calculator. All right, so the irony is a lot of the things that we're going to have to be able to do, which ostensibly were so that you, you were able to do them without calculators, we're going to have to do them with calculators because we're, we're not as bright as we used to be as far as using calculators. But the bottom line is, I, before I, I start into this, before I give you the proof, the bottom line is if I grab, if I grab tangent lines, a bunch of tangent lines. The tangent lines tend to, there are some exceptions, and we'll talk about it in class tomorrow. There, if I grab these tangent lines, the tangent lines tend to converge on the x-intercept. Not the tangent lines themselves, but their own x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts of the tangent lines start pointing towards this zero. Okay. Now, let's, let's keep this simpler. Let's see if we can do a quick little, because I need this algorithm. Newton saw this, and he said, okay, well, what can I do? Ooh, that's ugly. Sorry, guys. What can I do? I, it sure would be nice if I had a nice, clean algorithm to work with. All right, so let's see what happens here. What did he say? He said, take a value, all right? Let's just take a guess. So let's say I've got some function f of x here. And over here, I forget what your book does. I, I, you know what? I'm just going to say x0 equals my guess, all right? Which is sort of arbitrarily close to the true zero, but I don't know, exa know exactly what the zero is, all right? 
So I know that I'm going to have the point x of 0, f of x sub 0. Now, what are we doing? We're changing the color of our pen. We're finding the tangent line, okay? But really what we want is the tangent line's x-intercept because that's the next iteration. Once I have x1, what did I do? I stuck it back in and I started the process all over again, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a guess at x0. That's going to spit out an x1. And that's going to spit out an x2 if I can just stick this thing into an algorithm. All right, so let's see if we can figure out how to do this. I'm going to find the equation of the line tangent to f of x at x0. Okay, well, that's easy enough, right? I know that f prime of x0 equals the slope. True. Now think about this. This point right here is x0 or x1 comma 0, isn't it? True. Don't I know that f prime of x0 is equal to, if I just use the slope, watch, f of x sub 0, right, minus 0 all over x sub 0 minus x sub 1. True. Right? All I used was definition of slope. This, by the way, is just an iteration of the point slope form. All right, so what does that tell me? Remember, I want to be able to solve for this x sub 1 because it's the next iteration. That's all that I want to be able to do. Well, that's no problem. Watch. I get f prime of x naught is equal to, whoops, let's try that again, times, ding dong, times x naught minus x1 is equal to f of x naught. Now notice, these guys were all our initial guesses, right? This is what I want to solve for, this x sub 1. All right, so what am I going to do? Well, watch. I'm going to go x naught minus x sub 1 is equal to f of x naught divided by f prime of x naught, right? True? All right, now I'm going to send x, because this is minus x sub 1, I'm going to send x sub 1 to the other side, and I'm going to subtract this guy over. So what I end up with is x1 equals x naught minus f of x naught divided by f prime of x naught. Now, what does that really tell us? Well, I have a formula by which I can get the next iteration, right? If I want x sub 2... What am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take whatever x sub 1 came out as, which is, this is going to be x sub 1. Notice, this is an x sub 1. These are x sub zeros. So it's going to be x sub 1 minus f of x sub 1 divided by f primed at x1. Isn't that cool? x sub 3, you can probably guess. It's going to be x sub 2 minus f of x sub 2. This is an iterative process, right? We've seen this before. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so what is x sub n plus 1 going to be? Well, it's going to be x sub n minus f of x sub n divided by f prime of x sub n. Now, I'm going to show you a really cool use of this. All right, we're going to do an example. But the example is going to be a little bit crazy. All right? I am going to find the square root of 5 to within, let's go accurate to within thousands, okay? Now there are thousands. Um, there are algorithms that we can use to find square roots, and these are pretty old. They've been around for a really long time because we didn't have calculators. We didn't have computers that could do it. However, watch. I'm going to use Newton's method. Now you may say, well, wait a sec, what does this have to do with Newton's method? Newton's method finds x-intercepts. It finds zeros. It finds solutions, right? Those are all words that we use for x-intercepts. Well, think about it. If I say, if I'm saying, if I want to figure out when x squared equals 5, Right? Because that produces the square root of 5. How could we come up with the square root of 5? Well, this is one way of doing it. Remember, Newton's method finds zeros. So let's turn this into a function whose zeros I want to find. How about x squared minus 5? 
and I'm going to set that equal to 0 because that's when the square root of 5 comes up. Okay, now, ready? This will be fun. What do we know the square root of 5 is about? Well, it's 2 point something. So let's let our guess, remember that's x naught is our, always our guess. Let's let x naught equal 2. Now, here's our formula right here. I want to find x1. Well, what do I need to find x1? And this is kind of backwards, isn't it? Well, I've got my guess. I need to find f of x naught, and I need to find f prime of x naught. So I need to do a little bit of dirt work here, don't I? I should probably find f prime of x, which is 2x. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so you ready? Um, x1, according to this formula, is going to equal x naught minus f of x naught over f prime of x naught. And this is going to equal 2 minus, let's see, f of 2 is what? Negative 1. So this is negative 1 over f prime of 2 is 4. Correct? So let's see. 2 plus a fourth is what? 9 fourths? 9 fourths. Do you agree with that? Which is what? 2.25. All right. I'm going to write this. I'm, well, no, I'm not. Let's just go. It's going to be 2.25. Let's go. How about x sub 2? Well, x sub 2 is x sub 1, which is this guy, minus f of x sub naught. Oh, whoops. Try that again. f of x sub 1, x sub 1, divided by f prime of x sub 1. I may have to take the show over to this side because I'm running out of room a little bit. Okay. Well, let's think about this. x sub 1 was 9 fourths. So we've got 9 fourths minus f of, let's see, 9 fourths squared. Let's do some scratch. So um, f of 9 fourths, I'm coming over here, is 9 fourths squared minus 5, right, which is 81 sixteenths minus 5, which is what, 81 sixteenths minus 80 sixteenths, right, 5 times 16 is 80, and this is 1 16. So 9 fourths minus 1 16 divided by, let's see, 9 fourths goes in here, what, 9 halves? Divided by 9 halves. So this ends up being 9 fourths, whoops, that's a 9, let's make sure, that's, I don't know why I got 9 ninths there. I've got 9 halves, which is what I want. 9 halves, right? So I end up with 9 fourths minus, now, let's see, when I flip and multiply, what do I end up with? Minus 172nd, is that right? 172nd. Okay, now, this is where you guys are going to laugh at me. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my calculator. Everybody pull out their calculator and figure out what this is. We could do it by hand. We know that the common denominator is 72, so I'd have to multiply this by, by uh, 18, right? Because 4 goes into 72 18 times. Is that right? 36? Yeah, 18 times. All right, so pull out your calculator and get a value. I'll meet you back, or I'll meet you over at the calculator.